Gold Standard Bank, Joseph Hyde, G999, Letter of Demand, Threats, Intimidation. This is Chris Trade. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of G999. This is just more of an update of some of the things that have been happening in the background that you would not be aware of. Uh, the first one is I ended up getting a letter of demand from a South African attorney allegedly uh, representing Gold Standard Bank, Joseph Heights, and then the South African MLM promoters. Now, in this letter of demand, they, they were demanding that I take down my video. Otherwise, they're going to sue me for defamation. I, c- I couldn't even take it seriously as an actual letter of demand, I'll be honest with you. And we're going to go through some of the uh, discrepancies. I'm not going to go through the entire document that was sent to me, simply because uh, there's just so much fluff. There, there was no tangible you know, evidence to anything uh, that they were that they were like saying. So anyways, let's get to it and you be the judge. So the first point that they made out to me was these products must be ethically sound and fully compliant with all legislation in the jurisdictions that they are offered in. Well, there's the first problem. They are not registered in the jurisdictions that they are offering. So if we go here, this is called Standard Bank Corporate Office. You could see that they were promoting in Times Square, New York City. However, New York City actually has a legislation, a regulation about promoting and enticing or soliciting uh, their public into a cryptocurrency or buying cryptocurrency or into a project. So, and it's actually called a bit license. So, this is the New York State Department of Financial Services, and they've got a topic on virtual currencies, and it's called a bit license. You actually need a bit license. So, who needs a bit license? Well, definitely, Gold Standard Bank would need one. See, a person that engages in virtual currency business activities requires a bit license. So this is under their legislation that they've got there. Virtual currency business activity can fall into one of the five types of activities involving New York or New Yorkers. Receiving virtual currencies for transmission or transmitting virtual currencies, storing, holding, or maintaining custody or control of virtual currencies on behalf of others, buying and selling virtual currencies as a customer business, performing exchange services as a customer business, or controlling, administering, or issuing a virtual currency. Now, where are they claiming that they are you know, acting in accordance with legislations. They don't even have a bit, uh, a bit license for New York, and yet here they are advertising in New York City, soliciting New Yorkers to buy their shitcoin, which is G999. Okay, here's the other problem. Just recently, and this caused a bit of a storm within their community, it was quite fascinating to watch. But as you can see in CoinMarketCap and on CoinGecko, they actually put a warning out for G999, and it actually referred to this particular link, you know, Carabas International, Carabit Foundation, and Associate Companies, Gold Standard Bank, and Freebay. Now, they're trying to argue from a G999 and Gold Standard Bank points of view that there is no association, okay, that they shouldn't be on this list, and therefore, uh, you know, there's no ties. Well, unfortunately, that's not going to fly because you're missing the main reason for the warning. And it says here, we recommend exercising caution before dealing with Carabas International, Carabit Foundation, and associate companies like Gold Standard Bank, as they are not registered companies or financial services providers in New Zealand. You're not gonna fly by that warning. That is the initial reason for the warning, okay? You, you can be as cute as you want with regards to your association or disassociation. At the end of the day, the fundamental still sticks. You're not a registered legal entity to offer any form of financial services in New Zealand. Therefore, the warning will still stick. So you're not gonna get over that. So for them to tell me that these products must be ethically sound and fully compliant with all legislations in the jurisdictions that they are offered in. 
you're not. You're getting warnings. And in fact, I will go so far as to forecast that you will get a warning from South Africa, you'll get a warning from Canada, and you'll probably also get a warning from the US. Simply because you guys are not interested in being regulated by all of these countries. Hence why you've got your MLM setups to escape any form of authority. This is why your MLM model works for you. Because you have no desire whatsoever to go and be legally compliant with any of these countries you wish to operate in. Again, the statements of theirs is inaccurate. It is false. They then go on to say, Gold Standard Bank was never involved with carrot bars. Are you kidding me? This, this is the level of the letter that I got. It's, 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 it's incredible. So Gold Standard Bank was never involved with carrot bars, as they so claim. I just want to say thank you very much to James Doe uh, for recording and keeping a record of all of this because without your effort, I wouldn't be able to actually disprove this. So it's it's communities like this within the crypto space that are looking out for each other, that are, are trying to protect people. You can only thank the works of people like James Doe. Yeah. Uh, honestly, God, thank you very much. So this link will be in the description and you can go and judge for yourself. But you can clearly see Gold Standard Bank was involved with carrot bars. How they claim it was never involved is absolutely scary. Now, I also want to go to Alex, the current CTO of G999. Now, of course, he doesn't mention anything about G999 yet. But I want to show you something, how desperate they are in trying to disassociate themselves from the failings and the scam of G999. So I just want to just go up here. Uh, if we go down, his projects. Right here. You're going to notice something was deleted. We're going to go to Carrot Bar's, uh the forum in Telegram. Fair usage is made public. So I'm going to show you something. All right, so this is the Carabars lawsuit discussion forum. And this was actually posted uh, quite recently with regards to uh, Alex. Now, if you go here, you'll notice he puts the K merchant. And if we go back, you can see it's deleted now. Okay, so they are desperately trying to disassociate them themselves as much as possible but unfortunately the internet remembers so you know these type of cover-ups it's not working for you guys but let's just go back all right so as you can see he was actually part of this k merchant project now what is this k merchant project well let's go and have a look oh carrot bars isn't it so this is what alex was involved in this was one of his projects okay so I don't know how they think they can get away and basically state that G GSB uh, was never part of uh, carrot bars. As you can see for yourself, they were clearly part of carrot bars. You, you can't hide this information. All right, let's go back. All right, so part of the other discrepancy is it is also well known that carrot bars used a multi-level marketing system to market its products. However, none of this applies to our client, GSB or the G999 products. Again, are you kidding me? So if we have a look here, they claim in that they don't use a multi-tier um, MLM system. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous, you cannot make this stuff up. So anyways, I just wanna go through here and it says a pyramid scheme definition an arrangement, agreement, practice, or scheme is a pyramid scheme if participants in the scheme receive compensation derived primarily from their respective recruitments of other persons or participants rather than from the sale of any goods or services. Or the emphasis in the promotion of the scheme indicates an arrangement or practice contemplated in the paragraph. So they have a multi-level marketing system that goes nine levels deep. And this is their commission rates. Their residual commissions are paid as percentages of funds, okay, invested across nine levels. This is a snapshot of their levels. Now, what I wanna actually show you, 
that their GS Partners products portfolio, okay, this GS Basic Advantage Blockchain Savings Account has no commercial value. GS Partners Priority Support Tickets, no commercial value. G999 Basic Promotional Airdrop, a little bit of a commercial value. Basic GS Blockchain Academy, no commercial value. 5% discount GS Lifestyle Access. G999 and Club Swan use the same provider, okay? The GS Partners Aluminium Card, $985, Club Swan Premier Card, $499. The product is more than double the price of the competitor. Basic access to GS Partner uh, promotions, no commercial value. Basic access of G999 Market Voucher, no commercial value. Priority access and discounts on no commercial value comes with the ability to upgrade to Brand Advantage Premier within 60 days. Again, not a product. Not a product. Not a product. Ridiculous overpriced product. If we go down, this this is Club Swans, the, uh, the competitor. As you can see, nine level pay plan. Paid in real time. Rising block stars, block stars. It's not a product. It's not a product. Not a product. No commercial value. Infinity leadership, no commercial value. No commercial value. All right. Nine level pay plan. As you can see, the commission structure. No commercial value at all. But this is what they're promising. And this is where the actual money is. Okay. Because you can earn. 228 minimum 228,000 US dollars right up to over what we'll call it half half a million US dollars in what in, in a space of 12 months this is ridiculous this is high promotion at its finest okay so this is what they hypothetically promising it's it's, it's a lot of trash at the end of the day uh, but as you can see this is where the real they, they're not going to make 1.5 million on the G999 coin. Where you're going to make your 1.5 million is on the no commercial value that they've got, you know, pumping out. That is where the activity is. That is where the real money is for this type of uh, product or services, not in the actual project itself. This makes it a pyramid scheme. So again, I don't know how they claim. However, none of this applies to our clients, GSB or the G999 product. It's the same, exact same bloody setup as Carrot Boys. There's no bloody difference. You got the same promoters, you got the same owners or investors in Carrot Boys, and now it's G999. Where's the difference, guys? Like, I'm failing to see where the actual differences are. Okay, so. Let's just go back to the next point that they've raised in their letter of demand. Many people view Carabars as an outright scam and consequently any person with a historical association with Carabars is immediately dismissed as a scamster by the ill-informed. Okay, let's, uh, let's go back to Telegram here quickly. Okay, now I want to show you what Alex had to say. He was involved in the development of the K Merchants. He was part of Globe uh, GSB Bank that was partnered with Carrot Bars. So let's just see what he has to say. It seems they believe we are Carrot Bars or Freebay. Both are big scams. Okay, but Alex, you were involved in Carrot, Carrot Bars. You helped develop the K merchants. And yeah, you're saying it's a big scam. Now, either I'm misinformed or ill-informed as they would like me to believe, or actually, your CTO of G999 is highly misinformed. But given the fact that he was involved in these projects, and he's calling it a big scam, so what is actually going on here? Now, Alex, if you're listening to this, either get your uh, MLM promoters actually trained up properly, because they're contradicting everything that you're saying. And then I get to put up with bullshit letters coming out to me. Carapaz was warned by the New Zealand regulators. It was worn by the South African regulators. It was even worn by bloody Namibia. Okay, and Namibia actually outright called you a pyramid scheme. You were worn by the Canadian authorities. Okay, you guys and all your promoters decided not to listen to it and decided to keep pumping this product. 
carrot bars, okay? You cannot plead ignorance. So ignorance is not your defense. And the fact that you even state here that it is a big scam. So everybody who was actually involved there, based on your definition here, Alex, that it was a big scam, they profited from illegal, well, from ill-gotten gains. Yourself, Joseph Hitch, Gold Standard Bank, and every single MLM promoter around the world promoted from ill-gotten gains, which you are calling is a scam. My guy, you guys are going to have to learn to get a PR in you because what has been said between your MLM promoters, I get ridiculous letters of demands and here you stating it was a scam. So, But thank you for stating that because everybody knows that it was a scam and there's no justice being done with people who have lost their money. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And you guys have the nerve to say that I am arrogant, yet you guys come up with this absolute trash of a letter of demand. Anyways, guys. Let's get back to it. All right, the next one. The top exchanges for trading in G999 are currently respected exchanges such as HIT, BTC, BitForex, CoinSuper, BitEX Live, and South Exchange. How are they respected? They're not even registered with any financial authority anywhere that they operate. So how are these exchanges that you're listed on is respectable? They're not registered with any financial authority. That does that clearly states that they're not respectable, are they? It's, th this is what I had to read, guys. All right. The last thing. The alleged absence of any intrinsic present and future value in the G999. Okay. Let's deal with the intrinsic value side of things. Now, if we go to... Investopedia, you'll see. So the value of a currency is in its ability to do those things efficiently and effectively, facilitate transaction and act as a store of value. Okay, now, <laughs> like I said, there's been a lot of things that have been happening around the background. And part of that is a team has actually been developed to completely scrutinize and mirror and capture all the data from all activities that are happening within G999. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that, but there will have to be a future update, uh, updated video uh, as we're still busy collecting everything, but you're going to start getting a, a, a bit of a, a picture of what we're actually up to. Now, in order for a product to be to have intrinsic value, okay, as it says there, it's got to serve some bloody use, all right? Now, the G999, particularly their, uh, their their GS trade exchange, whatever you want to call it, well, the markers are already flooded with that. That that does not aid to your intrinsic value, okay? Now you've come with the angle, uh, you know, emails on blockchain and texting on blockchain, and that that's so revolutionary. Well, actually, it's not. This is one of your main competitors. So not only can you text, you can email, you can call, but you can also do video calls on their blockchain, okay? You, you're you not even at their level. Ford Knoxter has intrinsic value because all of the stuff is stored on their blockchain. G999, you can't even store the text messages on your own blockchain. You have to go to a company called Storage. Okay? Storage Labs. Storage Labs has the intrinsic value. G999 does not have that intrinsic value. Currently, you're actually down at about 21%. By the way, this is your competitor. They're up 24%. You see, this is the difference between a legitimate project and a project that's actually bullshit, that's plastic, all right? You don't store anything. You, you've you copied PIVX. Your, even your lifestyle card, that whole e currency exchange that you're doing, the, these are APRs that are pulled from them. You didn't develop any of this stuff. So what I have here is a very hollow plastic company. This is why this is down. But I'm going to show you <laughs> the main reason why you guys ended up having a huge dump from the 1st of March all the way down. I'm going to go back to Telegram and I'm going to go to my 
actual little channel on Telegram. All right, guys, so I want to actually just show you something that has actually happened pretty much from the 1st of March. So this is all the wallets, the corporate wallets, by the way, movements, and they dumped 592 million coins. Let that sink in, okay? Now, if we go back, why are you seeing this? It's because you've been told to huddle, 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 while the corporate ends up dumping on your asses. And it's going all the way down here while you're losing value on a coin you were told by corporate to huddle. As I said, it's about 592 million coins dumped on you guys. Sold. Now, the argument would be, no, 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 that that is the actual burn rate that happened in um, in March. Okay, well, let's go and have a look. Here is the uh, the burned rate that they've done in March. Okay, so this is last month. This is March. Okay, we're in April. Last month, March, right? If we go down, this is the totality of what was actually burned. So that argument doesn't tie up with the actual figures of over 500 million. All right, there's other discrepancies that, that have popped up as well. I mean, again, 402. There's meant to be four, sorry, 4,002. There's meant to be 4,000. Again, it's just this manipulation. And they're telling you to huddle and they're dumping on you guys. All right, guys. So if we go through to the Deflationary Explorer and we actually have a look at the emails that were burned, well, the emails that were actually transacted uh, through their ecosystem. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A total of seven emails were conducted in the space of that month. If we go to the voice app, now I actually calculated this out, but it comes to about two, 2,047 texts were actually transmitted during the entirety of the month. And I worked that out again. You're looking at about 40 users in totality. If we take the average of um, sending about 50 texts per day, uh, you're going to work out that it was probably about 40 people that were really only sending texts on the system, 40 to 60 people. I mean, for something that they claim so revolutionary, this is a marketing flop a complete marketing disaster it is completely rejected i mean this is your competitor this is you guys oh you've slightly gone up well done but you know we're near you know we're near your competitor and if you have a look at the, this is ridiculous guys at the end of the day your product got rejected by the market no one wants to pay in order to send texts when they can do it for free no one wants to send emails and pay for that when they can do it for free i'm very happy using gmail at the end of the day it's free I'm very happy using it and in fact you guys are still using telegram you can't even create groups on your own infrastructure so at the end of the day what intrinsic value is there uh, your product's hardly been used. It was a complete marketing disaster. It's a complete flop. Let's be honest here. Now you guys are trying to invent a new token uh, called uh, WG999, right? The, the wrapped version of G999. Basically, what this is, is taking an ERC20 token and trying to attach a one-to-one -one to G999. I mean, collectively, between Gold Standard Bank and Carabas, I mean, you guys are produced nine shit coins to the market I mean, when at, at what point does it stop okay and if you can tell me what those nine shit coins are collectively uh please put them in the comments below it'd be nice to see uh what what people come up with but that's what you guys are doing kid this is telling me that your sales are actually quite crap this is what's happening your sales are terrible no one's buying into this product and I can tell you now, the biggest part of it is your MLM scheme. Unfortunately, that is undoing anything that you guys are doing here. Right, so having said that, I actually want to give quite a big shout out to Crypt Talk uh, Podcast. Dude, thank you very much for your mention in your video. Uh, much respect and love from South Africa. 
he's got a very cool video which I want to actually play out and guys the, the message is very simple just love yourself stop falling for these shit coins so with that message this is Chris Trade I hope you enjoyed the video peace out if you're new and you're first coming in and other people are telling you that the maximalists are they're closed minded bro and they don't understand and they're stupid and this and that. Bitcoin maximalists are people with experience. You know the pleb movement was a bunch of people who got dumped on by the ICO promoters and all the bad actors from 2017 and they realized that the only thing that's real here is Bitcoin and that Bitcoin is the risk free rate and that by just doing very simple th listen hodling bitcoin is very simple but it's not easy it's fucking difficult every single day you have to wake up and you have to make the decision to hodl but you're gonna have to learn some self-discipline some self-responsibility some self-control i mean caveat mTOR like buyer beware that like one of the things i've been saying is that if you go out and tell lies in mainstream traditional advertising the fcc is looking out for you burger king can't come out with a whopper and be like this whopper cures cancer but a shitcoin can come out with anything they want and say that it does anything they want and because you're used to living in a nerfed world where there are guardians who protect you from evil manipulators and liars right you're used to things that are are being told to you in mainstream media being true or more or less true and so you just go oh yeah well if burger king says it cures cancer then it must cure cancer i, I guess i'll eat a bunch of whoppers right <laughs> that's what you're doing that's literally what you're doing when you're believing a shitcoin uh. sales pitch there's no one gonna step in and save you you got to step in and save you. You got to love yourself. You got to love yourself. Buying shit coins is nihilism. You're just going like, my life is shit. Everything around me is shit. I have no hope for the future. I'm going to put 10,000 bucks in this thing. And maybe it's going to thousand X in the next two months. I don't care if it's an absolute piece of shit. I don't care if it does nothing for the world. I don't care if it's vaporware. I'm either going to sleep in a tent or I'm going to fucking buy a Lamborghini. That's nihilism. That's fatalistic. Bitcoin is rational optimism. You're putting aside something for future you. You're saying, I have a future. I love myself. Myself. Things are going to be better for me. I'm going to have a fucking family. I'm going to claw my way out of this fucking morass I find myself in. That's a revolutionary action to like actually love yourself and to actually do the right thing for yourself and put aside money for your fucking future. So hodling starts with self-love. Shitcoiners are into Bitcoin too, man. They're just into your Bitcoin. They want your fucking Bitcoin.